All right, we're on page 82, chapter 10, His Honest Self. After a few years of making Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Fred took a break to try a new project. He made a program for adults called Old Friends, New Friends. He liked talking to people who led interesting lives and did good work. Some of them were his friends. He thought other people would enjoy hearing their stories, too. On his new show, he interviewed mus musicians, artists, athletes, religious leaders, and even his own barber. Fred had not moved out of the neighborhood for good, though. He came back in 1979 to make new episodes. It had been nearly 30 years since Fred had started in the television business at NBC. A lot had changed. There were more channels and more programs. Commercials that tried to sell toys and junk food to children were everywhere. Fred didn't like it. Sometimes he was asked to appear in commercials. He always said no. He wanted kids to trust him. Telling them to buy stuff wasn't the way to do that. Burger King once invented a character that looked and acted a lot like Mr. Rogers. He even wore a sweater and sneakers. Fred wasn't happy about having his personality tied to close, so closely to an advertising character. He called the people at Burger King and asked them to stop running the commercials. 84, 85. Fred didn't want his viewers to think that he would approve of the advertisements. In 1981, Fred welcomed a 10-year-old boy named Jeff Erlinger onto the show. Jeff used a wheelchair to get around, and Fred asked him to asked him a lot of questions about it. He wanted viewers to understand that having a disability only made a person different on the outside. On the inside, they were like anyone else. Together, Jeff and Fred sang a song Fred had written. It's You I Like. It was one of the most popular episodes ever. Fred was always busy, and he kept to a strict schedule to make sure he could fit everything in. He got up at 5.30 a.m. to write letters, read the Bible, and go for a swim before work. He was in bed by 9.30 p.m. each night. He didn't smoke or drink alcohol, and he was also a vegetarian. For his whole adult life, he weighed exactly 143 pounds. When they could get away, the Rogers family liked to spend time at their beach cottage in Nantucket, Massachusetts. It was named the Crooked House because of its funny shape. Fred loved the ocean, and he didn't care that there was no TV at the cottage. Apart from his own program, he didn't like TV very much anyway. 86, 87. In his personal life, Fred was just as friendly as he was on television. At parties, he took time to talk with other people's children. At Halloween, the Rogers gave out full-size candy bars, not fun size, and no fruit. Everyone who met Fred said the same thing. He was the same man off camera as he was on. One of the greatest gifts you can give anybody is the gift of your honest self, Fred said. I'm like you see me on the neighborhood. Chapter 11, Growing Up with Mr. Rogers. The neighborhood was aimed at children ages 2 to 5, so most viewers only watched for a few years. By the 1980s, Fred's first generation of fans were grown up. Now he was invited to give speeches at high school and college graduations. People cheered and gave him standing ovations when he arrived. They didn't just remember Fred. They loved him. 88-89 He was still making fans, too. One afternoon, Fred was in New York City when it started to rain. Everyone grabbed a taxi, but Fred couldn't find one. He headed into a subway station to take the train instead. School had just let out, and the subway was crowded with children. They recognized Fred. Soon they were singing, Won't You Be My Neighbor, to him. Fred even had a fan who was a gorilla. Coco was born in a zoo in California and had learned to communicate using sign language. Coco loved watching Mr. Rogers on TV. When Fred went to meet her, Coco recognized him immediately. She took off his shoes, just like she'd seen him do on the show, and then she used sign language to signal, I love you. 9091. By 1997, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood had become the longest-running children's program on television. It had been on the air for 29 years. That year, 
Fred went to an awards ceremony for the Daytime Emmy Awards. These awards are given to people who work on shows such as children's programs, soap operas, and talk shows. Fred was going to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award. It would honor the work he had done throughout his whole career. When Fred's name was called, he went up on stage to get his award. No one in the audience was ready for what came next. Instead of just giving a quick speech, Fred asked the audience a question. When they were children, who had made them feel special? Who had helped them? Fred wanted, Fred wanted everyone to take a few moments to remember those people. Ten seconds of silence, he said. I'll watch the time. An awards ceremony with hundreds of people is not usually quiet, but it was for the next ten seconds. 92-93. The Emmy Awards. Each year, the Emmy Awards are held to recognize the best programs, performers, and crew members in television. They are given out at formal ceremony that, of course, is broadcasted on TV. There are separate categories for shows that air during prime time, the evening hours, and those that are broadcast during the day. The word Emmy comes from Emmy, which is a nickname for a type of light tube used in early television cameras. Fred had, par had a particularly proud moment in 1999 when he was chosen to join the Television Hall of Fame. It honors people who have made significant contributions to television. Fred was in the audience waiting to be called up to the stage to receive his award. When he saw a man come onto the stage, Fred recognized him immediately. It was Jeff Erlanger, who had appeared on the show when he was a young boy almost 20 years earlier. When Fred saw Jeff had come for a reunion, he leaped out of his seat and ran onto the stage to give him a hug. And Jeff told Fred, it's you I like. When Fred made friends, he kept them for life. 94-95. Chapter 12, America's Neighbor. By 2000, Fred thought it was time for a change. Both his sons were married and had their own careers. Fred had been living in Pittsburgh and producing the neighborhood at WQED for more than 30 years. He'd almost, he made almost 900 episodes. Now he was ready to say goodbye. He taped his last program and left the neighborhood set for the last time. The final episode aired in 2001. But even though neighborhood had ended, Fred wasn't ready to retire. He began working on plans to open the Fred Rogers Center located at St. Vincent College in Fred's hometown of Latrobe. The center was established to study ways to help young children use television, digital media, and other types of technology. 96, 97. Fred had made enormous contributions to American children during his long career. In 2002, President George W. Bush awarded Fred the Presidential Medal of Freedom. It is the most important award that a U.S. citizen who was not in the military can receive. Unfortunately, Fred only had a short time to enjoy this new stage of his life. In 2002, he was diagnosed with stomach cancer. After a brief stay in the hospital, Fred knew he wasn't going to get better. He went home and died there in February 2003 at age 74. Joanne, his wife of more than 50 years, was with him. Millions of people mourned Fred's death, and they did not forget him. The year he died, an asteroid was renamed Mr. Rogers to honor Fred's love of astronomy. A few years later, a sculptor made a statue of him tying his shoes. It went into a park in Pittsburgh. Another statue went up in the town of Latrobe. Fans also can remember Fred by visiting the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. One of his famous sweaters, a red one, is sometimes displayed there. 98-99. The Smithsonian Institution. A British scientist named... James Smithson donated money to form the Smithsonian Institution, which was founded in 1846. It is dedicated to promoting the spread of knowledge. The Smithsonian is the largest group of museums in the world. It also has gardens and a zoo. The different museums explore topics including aviation, space exploration, natural science, American history, art, 
American Indian culture and African American history. More than 20 million people visit the Smithsonian Museums each year. Many people have wondered why a British man would give his fortune to start a museum in the United States. But it's a mystery. Smithson himself never said. 101. Fred Rogers also lives on through his television show and characters. Public television stations ran reruns of his program regularly until 2008. In 2012, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, an animated show, began airing. It stars the son of Fred's original Daniel Stripe Tiger and is similar to the original Neighborhood. In 2018, when Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood turned 50 years old, people all over America marked the milestone. A documentary, a nonfiction film about a person or event, was released about Fred's life called Won't You Be My Neighbor? A movie about Fred's friendship with a journalist titled A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood began production that same year. Actor Tom Hanks was cast to play Fred. Contestants on the game show Jeopardy answered trivia questions about the neighborhood, and the U.S. Postal Service put out a stamp with a picture of Mr. Rogers posing with King Friday. Mr. Rogers taught kids an important lesson, that everyone is special in their own way. 102-103. Whether he was talking about something silly or serious, Fred had a talent for connecting with children. With him, they were always safe, loved, and welcome. His gift was to care for everyone, no matter who they were. For that, he asked, the, he asked just one thing in return. Could they do the same? Because that's what being a good neighbor is all about. Okay, now you'll see on 104 and 105, one is the timeline of Mr. Rogers' life, and the other is the timeline of the world. So it's showing what happened, what was happening at the same time. Okay, we can talk about this more later, but um, hopefully that helps. Remember, you can pause that at any time, rewind, fast forward, however you want to use it. Okay.